During the mission period, there was a significant movement by the Spanish Padres to bring people from Baja California to San Diego. They all made the trek on foot. Those who stayed worked at the Presidio Mission and at the Mission San Diego de Alcala until the missions were dissolved by the Mexican government. For their services, the Spanish soldiers were awarded land in what is now Old Town, and the women would also own land too. There are some incredible stories about women during the mission and Mexican period in Alta and Baja California during the 16th and 17th centuries. Women in history that ultimately have ties to San Diego. Maria Amparo Ruiz was a teenager when she married Henry Staten Burton, a Civil War general and national hero. The couple met when Burton and his troops invaded La Paz in Baja California. Maria Amparo and her family were living in La Paz at the time. Burton would later come to Alta California California and settle in San Diego, taking an army post at Mission San Diego de Alcala. But what happens is there's trade, commerce, uh, power, power plays, power structures, the desire to grow, and the Anglo men wanted in on it, so to speak. They wanted to connect with the with the uh, gente de la razón, it was called, the, the Spanish men who were very powerful and who were building land and and commerce and so on. And um, the, the women were their way to enter, enter into the picture. Mesa College professor Rita Sanchez teaches Chicana studies and is amazed at Maria Amparo Ruiz's life story. Maria Amparo Ruiz was born in 1832 and is part of a wealthy Spanish family in Baja California, owning vast portions of land both in Baja California and later in San Diego. Upon marriage, Maria Amparo and Burton travel throughout the United States as Burton takes on different military posts. The couple purchased Rancho Jamul just east of San Diego. They bought land here in, in San Diego and then she left her land to go elsewhere with her husband, travel with her husband. When she came back, there were squatters on the land. And so what happened with Maria Amparo Ruiz is that she had to, she had to go to court to fight for the land that they had actually purchased. Maria Amparo Ruiz de Burton has a life filled with social and political obligations. She is believed to be the first Mexican-American woman to become an accomplished author, having written two books and a play, La Mancha de Don Quixote. The book, The Squatter and the Don, details a large part of her life and that of other Californios as they began to lose their lands to American settlers. After a 23-year-long legal battle, Maria Amparo never regained full control of her ranch. The government finally settles with her, but not until years after her death. As I mentioned, Maria Amparo came from a wealthy family during the mission period. Her grandfather is Lieutenant Jose Manuel Ruiz and Commandant at the Ensenada Mission Rancho de Todos. And her great uncle, Commandant Francisco Maria Ruiz, runs the Presidio in San Diego. But there are other women who left an impact in San Diego. They would call themselves the Californios today. They would have considered themselves, I believe, Spaniards coming up from what is now Mexico. And, you know, the tales are, are massive that they walked. That's what, how they got here. They walked, the children walked, and they walked, of course, from mission to mission. Ashley Gardner knows women's history in San Diego. She is the Women's Museum director near downtown. Ashley describes how the American settlers began to intermarry with the California women to own land and be part of the social, political, and economic inner circles in Old Town. The men would change their names to Spanish and take the Catholic faith. California Josefa Carrillo also intermarried with an Anglo man. Theirs would be a love story that is still talked about today. There is Josefa Carrillo, and then there's Felipe, Filipa Osuna. And these are two really important San Diego women to look at because they were so involved during the time of the takeover of the U.S. of their lands. So um, we have to see that these, these women are such an incredible part 
of San Diego history. Josefa has a strong connection to the Presidio Mission. Her father was born in Baja California in San Jose del Cabo. He would travel to San Diego in 1800 and be part of the mission's garrison for 20 years. That is where Josefa was born in 1810. She too came from a well-connected family and would meet her future husband at 16 years of age, sea merchant Captain Henry Fitch in San Diego. Here's how Josefa Carrillo is important in San Diego history. She is actually related to Governor Pio Pico. So her maternal grandmother uh, and his paternal grandmother are the same, same woman. So they're related. They're actually oh, wow. cousins. Although Josefa did not have an education, some say her family connections and beauty made up for it. At the time, women were responsible for the household and family. Josefa would marry Connecticut merchant Fitch. Their wedding caused such a stir, mostly because the couple decided to elope. They would eventually marry in Peru in 1829 during one of Fitch's voyages. Upon their return to Old Town, Josefa had given birth to a son. Josefa Carrillo is, is at home, so she has to... She, her involvements are with her community and with her social life and, and so forth. So she becomes an independent woman even while she's married because he's gone so much. And I just wanted to say something about that. These women were participants in history, but they were also very in, independent women. Fitch would become the first permanent American settler in San Diego, playing a key role in early California commerce. He would travel up and down California's coast, Mexico and Hawaii, trading goods, hide and towels from the missions and ranchos. And so there was unions made between the California women and the uh, British uh, European uh, soldiers, hopefully sometimes happily, maybe sometimes not. But what it did do, it did continue the culture and it did in many instances, not all. There are some sad stories, I'm sure, and that always happens in Culture Clash, where the women were able to retain some rights and perhaps hang on to some of their property. The couple would live in Old Town for 20 years and have 11 children. Fitch would open a general store in Old Town, the only store in 1845. It is believed Josefa ran the store as Fitch was away at sea much of the time. He would die in 1849 and was the last person buried at the Presidio. Josefa would live another 44 years and help document her family history. She died in 1893.